Hey guys, Yuma here, back with another video. Uh, today I will be showing you how to kill the boss, Greg Orvik. Just a quick note that everything in this video from equipment setup to equipment loadouts is purely recommendations. So if you do have something that is slightly different, that is totally fine. It's just what I've been using when I go to kill Greg myself. So without wasting any more time, let's get into the video. So Greg has a total of 200,000 life points. Um, he will frequently poison the player, so I do recommend you bring some anti-poison, or if you have augmented your equipment, then um, attach a Venom Blood Perk uh, to your armor. He can change his combat level from 1 to 999. Now this doesn't affect the fight at all, it's just a visual thing. Although if you are using Dominion Mines, you won't be able to use it on him if his level reaches above 138. And lastly, when his uh, life points reach 140,000 and 60,000, he will summon some shadows that will just switch places with each other around the arena and Greg himself, but I'll show you that later on in the video. So now moving on to recommendations, I recommend a 90 plus combat and defense. 80 is the minimum you will need to get into the arena and fight Greg, so 80 plus prayer. 80 plus weapons and armor to deal enough damage and protect yourself and 96 plus herb law just so you can use overloads. To be able to use range protection or soul split, now personally I would go with range protection, I lasted uh, a lot longer in the fight uh, compared to soul split. Super potions or if you have the herb law level then overloads. A damage boost in familiar like a Calgarian demon, a ripper demon, um, something like that. The Venom Blood Perk I highly recommend um, because that would just mean you don't have to worry about his poison wall damage and he does that quite a lot in the fight. Some poison wall boosting items such as Cinderblade Gloves uh, will help quite a lot in this fight because he is poisonable and a distance fighting weapon such as a mage weapon, range weapon or something like a Noxif or a Halberd. Okay, so now moving on to the different attacks Greg does. Now I want to go through four different attacks he does, um, so I'm going to be doing this one by one. Let's get into it. So to start with, I'm just going to talk to you about the attack cycle Greg does. So to start with, he does three auto attacks, then he does a trick knife attack, then he does another three auto attacks, summons a spirit, depending on the place you are in the arena, three more auto attacks and then he does his glaive throw and then after that he goes back to his three auto attacks. Now in between this depending on his life points he will be summoning uh, those shadows so just keep a lookout for them as well. So when Greg isn't using any of his other attacks he will be using his standard auto attack. Greg uses normal melee and range attacks, he swings his glaive in his melee attacks and throws them in his range attacks. Greg's melee attacks can hit very hard, players using melee can use halberd type weapons to attack Greg from outside his melee range. Uh, players doing this should be aware that when run is left on, the player character will run into melee distance, meaning Greg will start using melee attacks unless the player walks one tile away. Now I recommend you use deflect range or protect from range uh, during this and turn off your run, which means you will take longer to get to Greg every time he jumps between his shadows. The next attack Greg will do after his auto attack will be a mechanic called Trick Knife. Greg will throw a Trick Knife at the player or one target if he is being fought by multiple players using his right arm. The knife will hit three times in total and it will bounce between players even if they are in the lobby area. It will also bounce on any spirits or shadows lingering in the arena. The attack has 100% accuracy regardless of armor uh, rating and can deal up to 2300 damage. The type of damage dealt varies. If the player is within melee distance of Greg then the knife does melee damage but if the knife bounces to a distant shadow or spirit then it is dealt range damage. For this I suggest use the deflect range or protect from range um, prayers and to use the debilitate ability around the first trick knife throw. This will basically halve the damage for the whole duration of the trick knife uh, mechanic if you time it correctly. The third mechanic I want to talk about is summon spirit. So when Greg uh, yells rise child and summons a spirit of rage, spirit of delirium or a spirit of mania from the mask scenery objects around the arena. 
Now the type of spirit summoned depends on which mask keeps closest to you when you initiate the mechanic. Uh, the spirits only have 3000 health and a combat level of 60, meaning that they can set off the minion mines if they are being used. Should the spirit touch Greg, they will say a quote before dying off and Greg absorbs them. The spirit of rage increases his combat damage, the spirit of delirium increases his poison damage and the spirit of mania increases his attack speed. If the spirit is successfully tagged, Greg will not absorb it even if it has touched it. So for this I suggest you still use deflect range or protect from range and if you are using the venom blood perk you can completely ignore the delirium. Um, if you don't, then I recommend you just tag and kill the other spirits. It just depends where you are in the arena. The last mechanic is called uh, the Glaive Throw. Now Greg will toss both of his glaives into the air and small shadows will appear throughout the arena. Move away from the shadow spots as after 2 seconds daggers and knives will fall from the ceiling onto the spots and deal up to 1700 magic damage to players stood on them. It is possible to flick this attack though Greg's auto attack will register before this attack, despite the visual 1x1 tile coverage, the attack actually covers a 2x2's coverage, uh, with the east, southeast and southern tiles from the shadow also being danger zones. Now all I suggest you do is again deflect range or protect from range and just try to stay in a corner or avoid the fallen glaives. Um, if you do take damage uh, don't worry too much um, but just try to tank the health back uh, so you can stay in the fight. The other mechanic that Greg does is the shadows and they respawn um, at certain times depending on the health he has left but I will just show you this in the video later on um, instead of just explaining it, it just be a little bit more easier to understand. Now moving on to the equipment I recommend, I'm going to start mid tier then work my way up to high tier. So starting with melee gear, starting top left. So I recommend an obsidian cape an Amulet of Fury, an Asylum Surgeon Ring, a Quiver, any tier is fine. For your weapon, a Halberd or a Spear that you can equip, so I've gone with a Masutis Spear and an Ancient Book, any one is fine as well. Then for the armour, I've gone with Bandos, so you want the helmet, chest plate, gloves, tassets and boots. For the range gear, I recommend the same cape, the same amulet and the same ring. Any quiver is fine as well and the same book, but change your weapon for a dark bow and your armour is going to be ranged, so armadillo, helmet, chest plate, gloves, chain skirt and boots. For the mage gear, for the mid tier, I recommend the same cape, amulet, ring and book, but change your quiver for a rune pouch, any tier is fine. Your weapon for a staff of light and because you are using mage I recommend subjugation so the hood, garb, gloves, gown and the boots. Okay so now moving on to the high tier melee gear starting top left I recommend a kiln cape so for the melee, the amulet of souls any tier is fine, a ring of death, a quiver again any one and a Noxif for your weapon and a scripture of when uh, but any book is fine as well. Then for your gear I recommend trimmed masterwork so the helmet, plate body, plate legs and boots but swap out your gloves for the cinderbane. For the range gear I recommend the kiln cape but the range version, an amulet souls, ring of death, quiver and your scripture but swap out your weapon for ascension so you want your main hand and off hand crossbows. The armour I recommend serenic so the mask, body and chaps but swap out the boots for fleeting and your gloves for cinderbane. Lastly for your mage gear I recommend the kiln cape, the mage version Again, Amulet Souls, Ring of Death and your scripture, but swap out your quiver for a rune pouch, any tier is fine, and your weapon for a Nox Staff. Then for the armour, I've gone with Virtues, so you have a mask, robe top and legs, but swap out the boots for Hellfire and your gloves for Cinderbane. Okay, so now moving on to the inventory, starting mid tier, I recommend Overload Flasks or Super Potion. Super Prayer Renewal for Potions and Super Restore Flasks, bring plenty of food, a War Tortoise Pouch and some scrolls, 
for the health bonus and enhanced Excalibur and for the prayer bonus and elven ritual shard. Uh, bring along a string cleaner as well, it's just handy for the drops um, just when you go boss fighting or just any fighting in general. For your high tier I recommend some supreme overload flasks, super prayer and all potions and super restore flasks. Bring plenty of food. For your combat familiar I recommend a ripper demon pouch and some scrolls and again for your health bonus enhance Excalibur and your prayer bonus elven ritual shard and a spring cleaner as well for the drops. Also just a note I haven't put a shield in any of these inventory loadouts but you can bring one along for devotion and if you do have some weapon poison plus 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 um, that will be really useful as well because the boss is poisonable so they will work really well with your cinder bin gloves. Okay so just a couple more things before we get into the video itself and that is the revolution bar. So basically this is the revolution bar I use for Greg, it's split into three different sections. So starting on the top is the revolution bar itself of the combat style I'll be using. So for this I will be using ranged. The row underneath I have three different types of weapons. Next to that I have some deflect curses and soul split. On the right hand side I have surge, escape and anticipation. But the row I'll be using mostly for this fight is the bottom row and that is split with debilitation and devotion. I will tell you when to use these when we go into the fight. Also just a little note that I have taken death swiftness out of my top ability bar only because I feel like I need the adrenaline for the bottom abilities more than I do for death swiftness. But if you do find that you want to use death swiftness then go ahead, whatever suits you best. And lastly, it's just a revolution bar setup for each combat style. I will leave a link in the description so you can have a look at the abilities more closely yourself. So just pick one out, make one up, and then you are ready for the fight. Okay, so just before we get into the fight, I'm going to show you a few things like how to get there and reputation. Then I will show you the fight itself. Okay, so there are a few ways of getting to the boss fight, um, so I'm going to just open up the world map and show you a few ways of getting there. So if we just scroll over to Al Karid, uh, you can just see there's the lodestone, and then what you want to do is follow this path through the desert, and then you want to cross this bridge, and you will end up in the dungeon. Another way of getting to there is by using an abandoned cap lodestone and again crossing the bridge and you'll end up in the dungeon. Um, if you have a desert amulet, uh, the fourth one, you can just teleport to here, then make your way there. If you have one of those agility scepters, you can go there and then use the dungeon. Um, if you have manifest lodestone activated, then you can just follow this path, go through the gate, cross the bridge and you will end up there as well. But I have found the easiest way of getting to the heart is by simply buying one of these heart teleport tabs from the Grand Exchange. If you give it a break, you will be teleported into the center. So where it was in the desert, just down the ladder. And what you want to do is make your way to Greg. So you want to locate the Greg reputation guy, cross this bridge, and then make your way all the way to the portal. Now the quickest way of getting to the boss itself is by teleporting to War Retreat. Now you can only do this after you've killed the boss at least once. But once you have, you can just teleport here, making your way down these steps. And then you can attune, uh, re-attune one of these two portals. So one of them is Gregovich. Um, there will be a small fee, but once you've paid it, you can use it as many times as you want. So just go ahead and you'd press yes, enter the portal and then you end up just outside like we were a second ago and then you can just enter and then you can begin the fight.
Okay, so one last thing I want to talk about before we get into the fight, and that is reputation. So if you right click this guy just here, you can be given a bounty for a certain faction. Uh, once the bounty has been completed, you'll start getting faction points and you can start spending them in these shops. Uh, each chosen has a different reputation shop uh, depending on the boss. So the rewards you can get are increased drop rates from the boss itself, which will help you every hour uh, in terms of money. And as you get further up, you can reduce the kill count before you go in. So usually it's 40, but when you get the 50% off, then you only need 20s to get in. Okay, so once you have your gear and your loadout, um, I have gone with a bit more shark because you will need it for Greg. Uh, you want to activate your pouch, add some scrolls, uh, turn on the book, then activate the vampirism aura. Switch on your prayers and drink your potions, then use your Excalibur and your Elven Ritual Shard, and you are good to go. Okay, so once you're in the arena, what you want to do is make your way to the top left corner, and this is where you'll be spending uh, the duration of the fight. So what you do is click onto Greg and then DPS his health down and then watch out for his first trick knife attack. Uh, once this happens you just want to activate your debilitate ability and this will half the damage for the duration of this mechanic. Then you want to do is right click this spot just here and you only want to move to this spot after he's done his glaive throw mechanic. So just keep DPSing his health down, the shadows will spawn, carry on like normal and then move once he's done the glaive throw. Once you've reached the spot, then you want to use the Devotion ability, and what this basically does is stop you taking any damage while the ability is activated. Even better, after an enemy is killed, then it will add a few more seconds on, and it will even stop you from taking any damage during this next trick knife mechanic. Then what you want to do is just right click this spot just here, and then keep DPS and his health down until you see his next glaive throw mechanic. Uh, once he's done that, you just want to move to the spot, then carry on with the fight like normal. Then all you want to do is look out for his last trick knife mechanic and then just before he does that use the debilitate ability again and then just keep DPS and his health down and then you should have your first kill in the back. Once he is dead, you just want to pick up any loot he's dropped. Uh, you want to make your way to this square here or the one just east of it. Then you want to make sure you have enough prayer points ready for the next fight. You don't want to be worrying about that during the fight. And you should have enough overload and super renewal to last you a couple more fights. Then you just want to get ready. Okay, so when he spawns, exactly the same. Focus on Greg himself. DPS his health down until he does his first trick knife, uh, three attacks in. Then you just want to use the debilitate ability to half the damage for the duration of the mechanic. Then you want to right click the spot just here. And then you only want to move to the spot once he's done the glaive throw. In a second he will spawn some shadows when he reaches 140k health. You just want to ignore them and then just focus on the glaive throw mechanic. And once he puts his arms in the air, make your way into the corner. Then you want to use the devotion ability. Uh, but sometimes you don't get the devotion second bonus from the shadows, which is totally fine. The normal amount is enough to um, stop his trick knife ability from damaging you. Then you just want to keep DPS and his health down. Then you want to right click the spot just here. Then you just want to wait it out until he does his next glaive throw mechanic. So the shadows will spawn, ignore him, just look out for that glaive throw, then make your way into the corner. Then once you're in the corner, all you want to do is use the debilitate ability to half the damage, then just carry on with the fight until Greg is dead. Then that is your next kill done and dusted. Okay, so in this fight, I'm going to show you the fight a little bit more slowed down. So I'm going to show you uh, bit by bit on the mechanics he does. And so you can have a better understanding on how to deal with him uh, when you fight him yourself. So when he spawns, you just want to click on him then wait for three of his auto attacks to hit you. So the first one's there, the second one, and then the third one. 
After he's hit you with the third one, you want to time it so you use your debility ability before his fourth attack. And that will half the whole damage of his trick knife mechanic and um, it should be around 5 seconds. Then you want to focus on this corner just here. And you just want to hold it but not press it until he's done his glaive throw mechanic. Now he does this around 140k health just before or after the shadows have spawned. But you just want to ignore them and focus on his glaive throw. So just keep DPS in his health down until he's done it. His arms will go into the air, then you just want to make your way into the corner. And once you're in the corner, you want to use your devotion ability, then you just want to focus on Greg again. Uh, the normal amount of time you get from devotion will be enough to block all damage from trick knife. So if you kill an enemy and the timer goes up, it's just extra um, immunity from any damage afterwards. So you just want to keep killing him, getting his DPS down. Then you just want to right click the spot on the other side and then you want to get ready for his next glaive throw attack. When the spirit spawns you can ignore it because you are immune from any uh, poison taken so even if the spirit does touch Greg you won't take any damage so it's fine. You will then summon some shadows and then he will do the glaive throw mechanic so you just want to make your way into that corner then focus on Greg again. Um, it can get quite crowded with the other shadows, um, so you just want to look out for his glaive throws um, so you can look out for the next trick knife mechanic. Then just before he does it, use the debilitate ability to block out half damage. Then by the time that is done, you should get your kill in. Okay, so that is everything for Gregorovich. Gregorovich, you know, I can't pronounce his name, so that's why I say Greg. I think everyone says Greg, to be honest. Anyway, I will leave um, any tips that I have left out in the description uh, to help you out in your first fight. I hope this video has been really helpful for you, and I will see you in the next one.